Well, good afternoon, everyone. It is so good to see you all here. Um, I hope you are enjoying your day. Um, just a couple quick reminders. Uh, starting uh, this Sunday, the 17th, we are going to be back in our worship spaces, uh, both at Ottawa and at Sundall. So I invite you, if that is a place that you would like to be back together again, please come and be a part of that. Um, as always, we will continue to keep our online ministry going, uh, both the, the daily time together as well as our Sunday worship time together. Um, so that you are aware, I am going to take uh, some time next week and uh, take some time off and, and uh, go uh, do a couple things uh, on a personal level. And so next week is going to look a little different. I have some special guests that are going to come to you during our devotion time um, and uh, share this, this time with me. Um, so I invite you to tune in, uh, especially next week, as we have some special guests come to you um, and uh, have some, some devotion time with you. Uh, I just want to say a special thank you to all those that have helped me over these last weeks with our uh, online ministry worship, our Sunday worship time from uh, Janice and uh, Joan and Bill and Judy and Mandy, Kaylee, all of our readers, um, uh, Connie and Jen and Kayla, I just, there were so many people involved that kind of made all this happen. Um, all the ladies that ha uh, helped during uh, Holy Week, I just want to thank you all. I could not have done this ministry without you helping me along the way. Um, and so I am so looking forward to being back in our space together, um, as well as continuing to reach out to all of you here uh, in this uh, this format, this virtual format, especially those that can't worship with us in person, but can connect with us here. We have uh, visitors uh, and friends and family from across this country, and it is so great to, to have that. So I think that's what I have announcement-wise. Um, I want to talk a little bit uh, today. I found uh, a passage from Psalms. It's uh, Psalm 27, verse 14. Um, it says this, it says, Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Sometimes I think we are in such a hurry in our lives. Um, we always want to make decisions quickly and we want to move forward rather than just letting things happen, letting God take his time with us, you know, to, to keep in step with God's perfect will. We also need to guard against jumping ahead of him, really, I think. And in so much that we have going on in our lives, just taking that moment to, to stop and wait for God. And that's, that's really what this verse tells us to do. It says, wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Sometimes our plans want us to just move things right along and to go as fast as we possibly can. Jump from one thing to another. And then we often find ourselves going, why? Why did this happen? Or why did that happen? We are often in a hurry to get what we want. Since we have this limited knowledge and understanding of what is going on, we should be praying about those situations. We should be praying about what is happening in our lives and waiting for God to come and be ever-present with us. He... We've talked a lot here about God's plans or 
God's timing. But I think it's crucial, especially now as we are coming through, through this pandemic, through this time of social distancing, where we are starting to want to ramp things up and get back to things, that that is good. And we are moving in that direction, but that we need to also let God work through us and work in us. But it's not it's not just in times of pandemic or, or other times. Sometimes we just need to simply wait for God to direct our lives or wait for God to give us an answer to the prayers that we seek so often. Sometimes waiting can be hard. Sometimes it can be really hard. But at other times, the outcome of that waiting is so much greater than what it would have been to simply push forward. And so in those times, when we hear God say to us, just wait. When God says wait, that's exactly what he, he means for us to simply do. We need to learn to listen to him and really follow his direction rather than trying to figure out all of this course of action and plunging ahead on our own. So I invite you to simply do that. Make a habit of listening to God. When we talked quite a bit these last weeks about being still and just hearing that voice of God. But that's what it's about. Listening, to, making a habit of listening to God throughout our lives. And if we make that a habit, then we truly will hear what his direction for our life is, what his will and his plan may be. See, he promises in his word that he answers prayers and will direct our path. But sometimes in all that, we simply do have to wait. We have to wait for him to show the way. So that's where this passage comes into play. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Find that moment to simply sit and be still. Find that moment where you can hear God talk to you, where God in his loving care, his heart, will know that you are listening to him and will give you what you seek. It may not be the answer you look for, may not be the plan that you thought you were going to have, but it will be a time for him to talk to you and for you to listen to him. And so as we start moving back into our world, as we start thinking of plans for the future and what we're going to do, as we just take day by day, find that time to sit and wait for the Lord to hear in your heart what he wants, to not be in such a hurry, to not always want to push forward. But in our haste, we need to often sit and listen to God. So that's my take on what that passage means. I know this time together, we don't have any specific goal in mind other than to hear God's word and to check in with one another. And that's what I hope it does. I hope that as these passages of scripture come to you, whether through me, whether it's a devotion from somebody else as we are going to get in the coming weeks, that somewhere that scripture 
touches you and leads you and opens your thoughts. I know by no means what I say is the ultimate or the end or, or the right or the wrong. It is just truly my feel on where the scripture leads me and how I hear God sometimes and how I feel his presence, which is what I give to you the best that I can. If there are any scriptures that move you, I invite you to send them to me. I'd love to know what you find in your Bible, what you find to be a scripture, a passage that touches you. And if any of the scripture we've talked about here together, you have a different thought, a different way, I would so love to hear that as well. You have several ways to reach out to me. And as we move forward in our time together on these devotions, may we all just find a way to connect with one another. May we all find that God's word is powerful, is all knowing. There are so many passages within God's word that touch all of us, that lead all of us in different ways. So take the time today to just sit and listen and wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. As we hear from the psalmist in Psalm 27. Would you pray with me? Good and gracious God. We thank you for giving us the gift of your words. The gift of the life through your son, Jesus. Be with us in our days as we go about our daily tasks. God, I lift up to you all the members of Sundal in Ottawa. As we begin to look at the future and coming back to worship, may you be ever present with us. And continue to keep us safe and healthy. Father God, I pray for those that are hurting, that you heal them. For those that are suffering from mental illness, that you ease their mind, Lord. Father God, I continue to pray for our leaders, locally, on the state, and in our country that they continue to govern with you at their side. Father God, I lift up all the congregations and the ministers that are discerning this time of returning to worship or continuing to be with each other in the virtual realm. May you be ever present with them. And God, as we continue to move forward, there are those that are on the front lines of this, and we continue to lift them up as we have. Be with them and wrap your arms around them. And Father God, sometimes we have things that we don't know what to say to you. May you hear our hearts. May we sit and listen to your voice. And may we just find time to slow down, to not always be in a hurry, and to wait for you. For your plan is the plan. Your will is our will. Father God, we blessed, are so blessed with the joys that you've given all of us life, love, peace.
peace and freedom. We thank you for those. We thank you for those that are in our lives that bring us happiness and joy. And God, as we come into the times where people are going to start to travel again, I just ask that you keep them safe. Keep them healthy and those around them healthy. That we all take a moment to reflect on what we have. All of this, God, we bring to you through your risen Son, who is Jesus the Christ, and who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It's great to have you here as we continue our time together. I am so blessed to be able to lead you, to be able to share God's word with you, to be able to be in this church family with you. So I invite you into the word to study some more, to reach out to one another, to be there for those around you. And as always, know that I'm here for you. Somehow, some way, you get a hold of me. And until we meet again, may God continue to bless you, continue to wrap his arms around you. And I hope you have such a very blessed day. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.